Okay, class, let's go over this test review. The first part of this test is going to be reading and writing algebraic expressions. So you'll read a sentence and you'll write the expression for me. So the first one says, nine less than four times a number. Well, anytime you see the nine less than, then we know that that means I'm going to subtract nine from something. Well, what am I subtracting nine from? I'm subtract subtracting it from four times a number. And we would write that as four and then whatever letter you, you wanted to choose. So that one we're gonna use 4x minus nine. Nine less than means subtract nine from what? Four times a number. Number two, the sum of five and a number. Okay, now there are, there are a few words that mean something special. Sum is one of those. Sum means that we're going to add something together. Okay, so when you see sum, put a plus sign. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is that plus sign we look at the next part, it's gonna go where the and is. So anytime you hear sum, difference, or quotient, we're gonna take the, the things in the order that they appear in the problem. So in this one, it says the sum of five and a number. So the plus sign's gonna go where the and is, so the five goes first, and a number goes second. So that represents some letter. It can be X, N, M, whatever you want. Number three, the difference of. Okay, again, difference means I'm gonna subtract. Okay, and it's one of those words that, that mean I'm going to get an answer before I move on. The difference of a number and two, comma, now if you remember that comma, it means that we have parentheses or we have a, a big bar or something like that. Okay, the difference of a number and two, so that means a number, X, and two. We're going to find the difference of that. Comma means get an answer to all that first, then divide it by three. So that means that this, this first part's either in parentheses or we have a big bar like that. In this particular case, it's gonna be the big bar divided by three. Number four, eight times a number decreased by five. <coughs> well, eight times a number, okay, means eight X, and then it says that thing, the eight times the number is decreased by five. So since it says I'm gonna decrease that by five, I'm gonna subtract five from it. Decrease is a word that means subtract. Six more than two times a number. So this one kind of goes back to the first one where we had the nine less than. Six more than means I'm gonna add six to something. Well, what am I adding six to? Two times a number, so two X. So there's the section where we're reading and writing algebraic expressions. The next section on the test is going to be evaluating expressions for given values. So it says evaluate the following expressions for X equals seven and Y equals negative nine. Now, we are allowed to use our calculator, so you should at least get your answer correct, but you do have to show your work. It says at the very top, complete the following, show all your work. Well, what I consider work here is plugging in your values and then coming up with an answer. So this one right here, I should see two times the seven and then minus six, because it says two times some number minus six. So we do two times seven first, which is 14, minus six, so 14 minus six gives you eight. And there's your final answer. Okay, on number seven, we've got three times y plus negative eight. So that's gonna be three times negative nine plus negative eight. Well, three times negative nine gives us negative 27. And then we do negative 27 plus negative eight. Our signs are alike, so I add them together. 27 and eight make negative 35. All right. The next one, now we have two letters in this one. This one says four times X plus Y. So that's gonna be four times, well X is seven, plus Y is negative nine. So we got four times seven is 28, plus negative nine. Our signs are different, so that means we subtract our numbers, and we should end up with, well 28 take away 10 is gonna be 18, so that's gonna give us 19. Right. Number nine. In this one, we've got X minus three times Y. So that's gonna be seven minus three times negative nine. Now, order of operation says I have to do this multiply first. So that'll be seven minus, and then three times negative nine gives us negative 27. So now, when we have a minus and negative, we know they turn to positive. So this is really 27 plus seven, which actually gives us 34. Right. Number 10 says eight plus two times Y. So that's gonna be eight plus two times 
negative 9. So that'll be, we've got to do this multiply first. So 8 plus, well, 2 times negative 9 gives us negative 18. So our signs are different, so we subtract, and we end up with negative 10. And then the last one, 7 times x minus 2 times y. So 7 times 7 minus 2 times negative 9. Well, 7 times 7 is 49. 2 times negative 9 gives me negative 18. So we change our signs, and now we have 49 plus 18. Well, 49 plus 20 will give us 69, and then if I take away 2, I get 67. So there's the section on evaluating expressions for given values. That's what the work should look like. Then we go to t-charts. Now on t-charts, I want you to evaluate the expression for all of these values, and I do want you to show your work for the first three x values, just like we did on our assignments. So in this first one, I'm gonna do, uh, take the negative two, plug it into the x plus nine. So we end up with negative two plus nine, which gives us seven. Then negative one plus nine, which gives us eight. And then zero plus nine, which gives us nine. And then the next two, we just use our pattern. It's 10 and 11, because we're adding one going down. Okay, next one, I've got x minus three. Well, first thing I'm gonna do is change that subtraction to addition next to its opposite and then I'll start plugging things in. Negative two plus negative three gives us negative five. Negative one plus negative three gives us negative four. Zero plus three gives us, or negative three gives us negative three. So we're increasing by one, so this should be negative two, negative one. Okay, now we move to some multiplication. So number 14 here, we're gonna plug in, it says three times x plus two, so that's three times negative two plus two. Well, three times negative two gives me negative six, and negative six plus positive two gives me negative four. And then three times negative one plus two. Well, this gives me negative three plus two gives me negative one. Three times zero plus two. Well, three times zero is zero, plus two gives me two. And you'll notice I'm increasing by three each time. So the next one should be five and then eight. Okay, now to number 15. On 15, we start with a negative coefficient. So in this one, we're gonna have negative five times negative two, and then plus negative two. I forgot to change that at the beginning. That's what I like to do. So negative five and negative two gives us 10, and 10 plus negative two gives us eight. Okay. Negative five times negative one plus negative two. Well, negative five and negative one make negative five, and I mean positive five, sorry. Positive five plus negative two gives me three. Right? And then negative five times zero plus negative two. Well, negative five and zero make zero, plus negative two gives me a negative two. So you'll notice here that I'm now subtracting five. So if this is negative, my numbers are gonna decrease. If it's positive, then I'm going to increase. So if I decrease five more, I get negative seven. If I decrease five more, I get negative 12. All right. Now, number 16, we don't have a plus or minus. We just have a multiply. But you'll also notice my x values changed. Okay, so make sure you pay attention to those kinds of things. So this one says negative 8 times x. So negative 8 times negative 5 gives you positive 40. But because of this negative, I do know that my values are going to decrease in value. Okay, so then negative 8 times negative 4 gives me positive 32, and sure enough it does, and it decreases by 8. Okay, then we've got negative 8 times negative 3, which gives me 24, then negative 8 times negative 2, which gives me 16, and then negative 8 times negative 1 gives me positive 8. And then for number 17, okay, again, our values are going to decrease, but again, pay attention to my, my x values here. Okay, so they're only gonna decrease if my x values are increasing. So this one says negative two times negative seven plus three. Well, negative two and negative seven make 14, 15, 16, 17. Then negative two times negative five plus three. Well, this gives me 10, <clears throat> and then 11, 12, 13. Okay. And then negative two times negative three plus three. Well, this gives me a six. 6 plus 3 gives me 9, and you'll notice what I'm doing, I'm decreasing by 4, okay? It's skipping 2 over here, so that's why it's double this value. 
So if I decrease by four more, I get five. If I decrease again, I get one. So there is evaluating expressions in T-charts. And then the last part of your test is dealing with application problems. And we have a few of those as well. So here's the first one. Tamara invested $15,000 in an account that pays 4% annual simple interest. Tamara will not make any additional deposits or withdrawals. How much interest will Tamara earn on her investment at the end of three years? Okay. So the first thing we've got to understand is what formula are we going to use? Are we going to use simple interest? Or are we going to use compound interest? Because we've got two different formulas. Okay, so the first formula is I equals PRT, and that is our simple interest formula. The second formula that we have is I equals principal times one minus the rate, I mean, excuse me, one plus the rate raised to, to time as an exponent. So this one says that I want to use the simple interest formula. So I'm going to use this first one right here. Okay, so it says, uh, how much interest will Tamara earn? Okay, so I'm looking for interest. That means I'm looking for the I. So in my problem, I should have P, R, and T. So I equals, well, the principal is 15,000. The interest, which needs to be written as a decimal, we got 4%, so I take my decimal, I find it, I move the decimal two places over, and that's gonna be 0 0.04 times, and then our time, and our time needs to be in terms of years. Well, in this particular one, it says at the end of three years, so that's good. So now you take your calculator, and you type in $15,000, okay, times 0 0.04 times three, and you should come up with a value of I equals 1800. So we look over at our answer choices. Okay, it says how much interest will Tamara earn on her investment at the end of three years? F is our final answer. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's look at the next one. Okay, this one says Mr. Wilkins deposited $2,500 in a new account at his bank. The bank pays 6.5% interest compounded annually on his account. Mr. Wilkins makes no additional deposits or withdrawals. Which amount is closest to the balance of the account at the end of two years? Okay, so this one says, how much interest compounded annually? Okay, so that means we're gonna use our compound interest formula, which is interest is equal to principal times one plus the percentage rate raised to time, okay? So again, I'm looking for what's the, what amount is closest to the balance of the account. Okay, now we need to remember that in this particular one, whenever I do the math, this, this thing right here, is, and it's actually A, it's not I, is actually the amount of money that we have. It's principal plus interest. So it's not just interest, it's principal plus interest. Okay, so we've got A equals, and in this particular one, our principal is $2,500. Okay, parenthesis. 1 plus, and again, our interest rate needs to be in the form of a decimal, so I move the decimal over, so we end up with 0 0.065 raised to time in years, which is 2, so that's going to be our exponent. So then we go to our calculator, and okay, we do 2,500, okay, parenthesis, 1 plus 0 0.065, close parenthesis, raised to the 2 squared, and we get enter, and we end up with A is equal to 2835.5625, all right? Now, what it says is which one is the closest to the balance? Well, I know A is the overall balance. It's principal plus interest, okay? So if we write that in terms of money, it should be 28. Three five two thousand eight hundred thirty five dollars and fifty six cents because that two is not big enough to do anything to the six. So we come over here and we look, and sure enough, F is there. Okay, one last question and then we're done with the review. Okay, and this one it says, which table contains only corresponding x values and y values, where the value of y is three more than the quotient of x and two? Well, what this particular problem is requiring you to do is take this, these words right here and change it into an expression 
and figure out which one of these t-charts matches that expression. Okay, so it says, okay, we want the x and y values to match the value of y is three more than the quotient of x and two. So three more than means I'm gonna add three. What am I adding three? The quotient of x and two. So that's x divided by two. Okay, because quotient means I need an answer to the division part before I do any of the addition. So I need to find out which one of these is gonna be closer. So what I do is I start plugging in numbers. Okay, so I take this one right here, I take my x value and I plug it into x and see if it works. Seven divided by two plus three, will that give me five? And it doesn't, okay? So then I go to the next one. Let's go to h here, because it's right there beside it. So I plug in a seven. Seven divided by two, well, seven divided by two is 3.5. And if I add three, I get 6.5. Okay, and I go, hmm, that's not right. But all of them start with seven. So I need to look for the one that's got a 6.5 in it. Okay, so I'm looking at G down here. F is 6.5. So now I do the next one. Does it work? Okay, 10 divided by two is five plus three is eight. Hey, that one works. And try at least three of them to make sure. And we got 14. 14 divided by two is seven plus three is 10. So guess what? G is my answer. And that is our test review. If you can do all of the information that we just did on this test review, the test should be really simple. I wish you the best of luck. Make sure you study.